All right, so now we're going to do an accelerometer. Okay, so some accelerometers, what they do is they're in a viscous fluid. Okay, and I'm going to say this has some damping coefficient B. And basically what you do, or some of them do, is they have a cantilever beam and they have a mass here where this mass is M. Okay? And basically as you move up and you move down, right, that cantilever beam is going to flex. Okay? And what they do is they put two strain gauges on the top and bottom and that causes the thing to flex, strain gauges strain, strain changes resistance, resistance changes current, and then you can measure the voltage drop, and that goes to your ADD, okay? The problem is, is that if you, say, accelerate constantly, right, it's kind of like hitting this thing with a force, okay? And so what you can do is you can say, like, I'm going to call the deflection here, if this thing deflects, I'm going to call that displacement X. So this is my deflection, okay? This beam here is going to have some you know, stiffness. And I'm gonna just say, just to make it easy, it has a stiffness K. It's really like EI over something, I forget the exact equation, but the point is, is that you're gonna have some stiffness where if you remove the force, so if you force it, if you, if you push the box up, that um, cantilever beam is gonna move down. If you remove the force and stop accelerating, it's gonna come back, okay? Now the thing is, is like, does it come back slowly? Does it oscillate? You know, what does it do? Okay? Well, if you look at this, this is basically, this, uh, I'm, the, I, the last problem was thermal, I'm not a thermal guy. This is like spring mass damper system. This I know how to do. You do the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. In this case, acceleration is x double dot. The, you know, the forces on this thing is gonna be negative kx, so that's the stiffness from the beam. Stiffness from beam and then you're going to get negative bx dot, which is uh, damping from the fluid. Okay? And then you're going to have oh, plus f, which this is your external force applied. Okay? And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this is m times a. And instead of doing external force applied, I'm going to say MA is external force applied, A is the external acceleration. Okay? So you have an external acceleration. You accelerate the whole thing upwards. How does this thing deflect? I want to plot that. Okay? So if you pull this all the, if you put this all together and you put everything on take one side, you're going to get X double dot plus uh, B over M X dot plus k over m, x equals a, okay? So you have an input. If you drew a block diagram, you have an input. Don't confuse a with the time constant from the last problem. You have your sensor, and then you have your measured signal. And so I'm gonna call this x tilde, 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 x tilde. okay? So your input, that's your actual acceleration, that's what you'd like to know, but unfortunately you're measuring a dynamic system now, okay? Uh, I think I'm missing some derivatives. Not too many dots. Okay, so now again, you've got homogeneous in particular. I'm gonna assume that this is constant. So A is just a 1G force. So I... Uh, Let's do 10 Gs. Let's say I put this accelerometer on a rocket and just, <coughs> just shoots in the air, right? What happens? I'm going to assume that X tilde initial is 1 G. So the accelerometer is sitting on the ground. It's under a 1 G acceleration. And then all of a sudden, a rocket turns on. Boom, 10 Gs. How does this system respond? Okay? So I am going to do... I'm going to do the particular first. So the particular, you're going to get x tilde the particular is, this a is 10 g's, that's a constant, okay? So I'm just going to assume it's b again. x tilde particular dot is 0, x particular t 
tilde double dot is zero. If I plug this all in, I get KB over M equals A. A is 10. K and M, those are properties of the system. And so B is what I'm trying to solve. So B in this case is M A over K. Okay? So there is my particular solution. Okay? Your homogeneous solution, unfortunately, gets a little bit more complicated. So if I take x tilde double dot plus b over m x tilde dot plus k over m x tilde equals zero, remember for the homogeneous solution you set it equal to zero. Now I'm going to assume that x tilde is a e to the st, just like before. I'm going to take one derivative and I'm going to get a s e to the st. I'm going to take two derivatives and I'm going to get a s squared e to the st. I'm going to plug this in and I'm going to get a e to the st, right, that factors out, and then my x double dot has an s squared term, so I'm going to get an s squared there. My b over m is going to come down. My x dot has one s, right, remember the a b e to the st pops out, so I get an s here. And then my k over m x, it's just k over m, the a e to the st pops out, so I just get k over m, and that equals zero. Now again, if you remember from the last video, if a is zero, it means that x tilde is zero, which is impossible. E to the st can never be zero for all t. And so the only way for this equation to be satisfied is if this equation equals zero. Now this equation, now, now you can see why they call this the characteristic polynomial, because this is a polynomial now. How do you solve a quadratic? Well, you solve a quadratic by using the quadratic formula. So you're going to get negative b over 2m plus or minus 1 half square root of b over m squared minus 4ac, okay? And these are the roots of your polynomial, okay? So now you can see why a second order system is complicated because here's the thing, this is a square root. If this term is negative, it means this whole term is imaginary. If this whole term is zero, it means you have a repeated root here. If this whole term is greater than zero, then it means you have two real and distinct roots. Okay, you might want to go back and like, you know, dig into the bowels of your ODE uh, differential equations uh, knowledge. But basically you have different homogeneous solutions depending on if you have a negative under the quadratic, a zero under the quadratic, or a positive number under the quadratic. And basically what you have is you have, um, this is called your discriminant. And so if the discriminant the discriminant is less than zero, you oscillate. Well, why do you oscillate? Well, this term is imaginary, and if you take an imaginary number and put it into an exponent, you're going to oscillate. If your discriminant is zero, it means you're not going to oscillate, and that's because you are, you have no um, imaginary component, and so you're going to have two roots here. So this is going to be almost like kind of first order. Okay, and then if the discriminant is greater than zero, then you're going to have two real and distinct roots, and you're going to have like, it's going to be kind of first order, so it doesn't oscillate, but slower. Okay, and so you have three different scenarios of whether or not it's less than zero, equal to zero, or greater than zero. Okay, and what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and just assign some homework. And if you guys run into trouble and you're like, I, I'd like to see a, an example fully worked out, just, you know, holler at me, post in the comments, and I'll post another video next week, okay? But that's basically the entire lesson plan for chapter 11. It's basically saying that if you get hit with an input, your output is not instantaneous. There are dynamics associated with it. If the system is first order, you're going to have a slow ramp up like the temperature curve. But if it's second order, you could actually oscillate and, and jostle the thing. And it makes sense, right? Imagine this system, if you accelerate this thing quickly, that cantilever beam is going to vibrate for a bit. If this fluid is super, super viscous, you might not oscillate. You might have so much damping in there. Remember, this B term is your damping, it's, and it's a function of your fluid. So if you make B really, really, really big, it'll make this number greater than zero, in which case you won't oscillate. You'll 
move kind of slow. So you have like a trade-off here. You could make your damping fluid really big, in which case you wouldn't vibrate. Your system wouldn't vibrate, so it'd just be a slow ramp up. But now your system's slow, which would introduce aliasing issues, right? Uh, you can't sample the system fast enough because it takes too long to respond. So you have this trade-off between responding quickly and vibrating and then like responding slowly but not. And you have to kind of decide like where do you want to be? What are your requirements? What are your constraints? Okay? Uh, so those are the lesson plans for this week for chapter five. I guess I want to post some homework and uh, see how you guys do. Post in the comments or uh, send me a message if you guys uh, have questions. All right, have a good night.